The next person we have tonight is Dr. McConnell. He's the first Chief Executive Officer in the history of Wake Forest University Baptist Medical Center. He is a practicing urologist, a noted, re a noted researcher in the field of prostate disease, an engaging teacher, and a successful administrator. In his current position, he must be the master in collaboration. As we in, here in Davie County begin on our journey, that's exactly what we, we must do, masters of collaboration. Dr. McConnell is also leading the Wake Forest Baptist in the strategic planning process, integrating the clinical, education, research programs, and the physician practices. Wake Forest Baptist is an important catalyst for economic development in the Piedmont Triad, and will be creating many exciting jobs in science, technology, engineering, and math. Dr. McConnell has a keen interest in public education and in preparing our students for the jobs of the future. Dr. McConnell, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Larry, and uh, good evening, everyone. This is an amazing event. I, I commented to several people walking in, often uh, asked to give brief remarks at public gathering, and you're expecting, candidly, low energy, six to 12 people in the room. This is, this is really amazing. However, I noticed most of you going through the food line and then coming over here and sitting down. Now, as Dr. Atala can, can tell you, what happens when you do that is all your blood flow gets shunted to your stomach, away from your brain. So I'm going to try to stimulate something here with two questions. Two questions. I want anyone in the room whose life has been fundamentally, beneficially impacted by a single teacher to please stand up. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? That's what this is about, is about teachers. Now sit back down again. Second question is a little more complicated. Who would like to have a larger bladder engineered by Dr. Atala? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's one, one person still. There you go. Got to, got to take her. Um, the reason I asked the question about the teachers is that uh, I'm here tonight because I am passionate about the importance of science, math, and technology education, especially uh, in uh, primary and secondary education. It, as Tony illustrated or, or conveyed, it is the starting point. Uh, I'm here tonight for another reason, that is I, I have a personal experience, or two actually I'd like to share with you that I've shared with some of your, your leadership here in Davie County. Uh, when I was a young uh, junior high school student, uh, I was candidly a very average student, not particularly motivated uh, to do anything better than average, and was inspired uh, by a biology teacher and became interested in science uh, and passionate about science. And it really fundamentally changed my life, just the experience in a single course in a single year in school. However, the, year, the next year, I decided I wanted to, to become a physician, so I met with my guidance counselor. And this was after taking an aptitude test, and I guess I must have scored reasonably well in math and science. And he asked me, well, so John, what do you want to do when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a physician. And he kept looking at my reports and shaking his head. I said, he said, no, you need to be a scientist or an engineer, you can't be a doctor. So I began college and went through three years of physics. Uh, before I decided to ignore that advice and go to medical school. So influences can be both positive and negative, but whether you're a teacher or a guidance counselor or a superintendent, a parent or a neighbor, just remember how much influence single comments, especially positive comments, can have on young people as they're making formative decisions in their life. Science and technology is very important for the future of our medical center, and frankly, we'll be, uh, Tony and I are going to be a little selfish here tonight. Uh, there isn't a compelling business case for Wake Forest University Baptist Medical Center to engage and promote science and math education in Davie County. And the reason is threefold. Uh, our mission, which we've recently re recalibrated, classically academic medical centers talk about their, their missions being three, uh, patient care, teaching, and research. And this sets actually up some uh, debate sometimes within academic medical centers about well, what's the most important mission. And conflicts of time and interest and even resources arise when you say you have three separate missions. 
So we have recently declared with our employees and our faculty that Wake Forest Baptist, in fact, has only one mission. And that mission is to improve the health of our region, our state, and our nation. Now, we have three unique ways, and it really is what discriminates us or distinguishes from very high quality hospital systems in general, is that we have three ways in which we achieve that mission. We provide preeminent care, very important. But we push the next generation of discoveries, as you heard from Dr. Atalo, that will improve the diagnosis and treatment and, uh, diagnosis, treatment, and hopefully even prevention of disease, so discovery. And third, we're charged not just with training students per se, but with training the next generation of leaders in science and healthcare. In all of those areas, we need young people, and we prefer young people from our own backyard, who have the tools necessary to be successful in the type of future that Dr. Powell painted for you. And I'd be the first to argue that there's a great importance to the arts and humanities to creating uh, the balanced person, absolutely. But the problem is we've gotten so far behind on the world stage that video was just compelling how far we've gotten behind. And a decade or two from now, we'll be even further behind unless communities like we're seeing here tonight seriously engage in providing an optimal educational experience for students <coughs> Uh, before, and actually the important time points here are often even before high school. Uh, it's well known that the key areas of the brain that actually determine mathematical function and reasoning develop pretty early and are largely influenced uh, during medical school times, uh, middle school times. So it's not just about what you do in high school, it's what you do throughout the curriculum and maybe even uh, pre-K to some degree, there's some evidence to su suggest that. So this community partnership with uh, STEM, with generous support from the Gates Foundation, partnership with our medical center, Davie County can be successful and no doubt will be successful in preparing your students uh, for a very bright future in this region. I think that the, the, the most important thing, I always ask myself the question, if you're only allowed to do one thing, what would that one thing be? Well, clearly the most important thing we can do is have the very best teachers. To have the very best teachers and to retain them, we not only have to provide competitive compensation, but we have to provide an environment, which are facilities and tools and things in their teaching environment so that they can convey their knowledge to students, knowing students learn in different ways and you have to expose them in any different ways. What does the science and mathematics education of the future look like? It doesn't look like what you and I went through. And just think of the last few slides that Dr. Tala showed. What really happens in a laboratory? You don't have, we're going to go into this corner of the lab and do the mathematical calculations required for this experiment. Then we're going to go into another corner and think about the biology and yet another corner and think about the chemistry. Tony, that's not the way science works, is it? It is completely integrated, completely. The mathematics is required for the calculations, it's required to understand the chemistry that's, that's required to get to the final point biologically. And so I think the classrooms and the teachers of the future are not going to be able to be nicely carved up into mathematics and biology and chemistry and physics. It's going to have to be integrated because that's how we need to train the workforce of the future. And I think the model of STEM is not only exciting, but it's been proven to be effective in other uh, communities. And I want to personally thank all of you who are behind this initiative for being passionate and persistent uh, to get this funding to be one of the six designated centers in the state. If, however, as the excitement of this evening wears off in a year or two or five or ten from now, you're not equally committed and equally passionate, it actually will not work. You, we only have to collectively commit to sustained excellence and sustained investment if we want to get to where we uh, need to be. No matter what business you're in, 10 years from now, as the video demonstrated, the technologies that you're going to be using in your business are going to be probably about 4x advanced beyond where they are today. So even in entry-level jobs, your workers are going to have to have much more sophisticated understanding of technology and, and probably mathematics than they do today. So it's just not about really fascinating science like Dr. Tala does. This is actually for the general workforce of our region that this is important. 
So I'd just like to close by again thanking you all for your commitment to science education and math education and technology, but to also challenge you all, especially in these work groups coming up, uh, to be an active part of this process, uh, to get involved, because uh, funding is important and it's a good start, but it really is going to take the personal commitment of everyone in this room to be successful, for this project to be successful. Thank you very much, and it's great to be here.